one thing that took me a while to understand is if you're setting up a painting, um, coming from 3D where you make an entire model, you sculpt an entire model, so you, it's just kind of subconsciously said that you'd want to light the model where everything can be seen. And there's definitely like render styles that emphasize that, where it's just a nice sort of diffused light that illuminates the entire model where you can see all the detail you made. And it's definitely a cool style that I did for a while, but lately I've been trying to experiment with more theatrical lighting with lots of dark shadows and lots of bright sources of light. Um, and that's definitely with this sketch here, I was trying to see how far I could push that. Uh, right here I'm taking it into Didu, which is another software, it's an older software by uh, the guys at Quixel that uh, is just good at like adding dirt and crevices and edge wear and all that kind of stuff, but you have to be super careful with what it's going to do to your spec and gloss because it's not designed for PBR, whereas the Quixel Suite and Marmoset are, so just got to keep that in mind if you're using them both. Uh, as far as doing texture maps, one thing I've learned is, aside from the normal map, specularity and gloss are super, super important because uh, one of the things with lighting that it can be frustrating because it looks like your model is just blown out and there's all this sort of washed out bright light that you don't want. You're not picking up any of the detail that you sculpted and you don't know why. And it's probably because your specular and gloss just aren't tuned in to the right values. Um, they're designed mainly to literally make all your details shine under a light and it's more of a emphasis on taking all those little forms you sculpted and enhancing the value with the specular highlight on top of them and uh, in order to get that it's not really an easy process it's just a process uh, it's really uh, it's just a practice of going through and just tweaking again and again until you get something that you really like When it comes to lighting, uh, the best way to go about lighting, I think, is to think of it as design, another aspect of design in and of itself. Uh, to think about it as the shadows that are being cast by the main light, those are shapes. So how do you want those shapes to be laid out? Are they aiding the whole composition, or are they making things more confusing? Um, what parts of the model are being illuminated the most, and is that what you want the person to look at first. Um, uh, just, just thinking of lighting not so much as getting caught up in the whole aspect of realistic lighting, but rather thinking of it in a sense of design, like what if I light this thing and the way the shadows are being cast and it's falling over the form, uh, how is it aiding the design or is it uh, making things more confusing? Still experimenting with bits of detail here and there, like I just put this series of patterns in front of the crest to just kind of see what it would do. Uh, and just taking the low poly into ZBrush and just breaking up the symmetry and making it look a little more naturalistic. I think this process is broken down into three main stages, which is the zebra sculpting, the texture painting, and then the regular traditional Photoshop painting. And I think it's just sort of a play-by-play -play of whatever I feel most comfortable with and whichever stage I think would be better handled. And say, like, the reason I didn't experiment too much with color and ZBrush is because I think, like, I'm more comfortable if I did it in the final painting process. and. I'm experimenting a lot with the texture detail here just because it, it would be kind of tedious in that final painting process and it, it's just uh, sort of getting that sense of knowing which stage of uh, your working process you feel most comfortable with. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't feel that there's a strict formula you need to follow. Uh, it's just whichever tools get the job done easiest and fastest and with the best results. Um, if you're more comfortable sitting down doing a pencil sketch and just scanning it in and or doing all your designs on paper first just because you feel more comfortable playing with abstract shapes uh, in that medium and then 
uh, doing it the uh, sculpting part in ZBrush. I mean, more power to you. It's just all there's uh, there's really no wrong way to go about this. So in this stage, I'm just I keep experimenting with gloss values and specular values and diffuse values and just taking a look, seeing how it works in Marmoset and going back and tweaking again. It's it's a pretty long drawn out process, but the more you experiment and try new stuff, uh, the more interesting results you might get. The more you might uh, get surprising results that you didn't even anticipate, but they look really great, so you'll run with it. <laughs> Okay, this is the stage where I'm starting to make some final composition passes and really getting ready to do the final render that I'm going to paint over in Photoshop. Uh, when I do renders, I'll just experiment with a lot of different renders. I'll do one where it's just blown out with a lot of ambient light, one where the light's way turned down and the gloss and spec are just cranked way up so I just get tons of highlights and I just sort of compile them all on top of each other and then using masks I kind of just pick and choose. Uh, anything on that pass that I might want to add to the main composition, and if not, I'll just discard it. All right, this is the last stage, the painting stage, and this is probably where I have the most fun. Um, as far as the brushes I use, I downloaded Whip Brogna's brushes from Massive Black about five years ago, and I haven't stopped using them since. They're just these amazing brushes uh, a combi that are just a combination of hard chiseled edges and really soft gradient edges, and they're just perfect. Um, I'll try to get a uh, link in the description to see. Uh, if you can get your hands on them. They're a little tougher to find now, but uh, I'll try to uh, get something where you could get your hands on them because they're just really amazing. And so right now I'm just going in with value and doing even more direction on where I want the viewer's eye to look. Um, just seeing the curve of the neck and the curve of the head and that little face area at the bottom there. Um, I ended up just uh, painting out a lot of the facial stuff down below um, and now I'm just kind of experimenting to see how it can support that large shape that's being created with the cast shadows on the crest and the color of the crest and contrast with the color of the body and uh, one really important thing with 3D rendering is unless you really know how to tweak the depth of field with the camera which I it's just way too cumbersome for me so I don't even bother. I'd rather just paint in the blurred edges in Photoshop. Uh, but that's super important because when you do a 3D render every edge is going to be super hard and that looks, uh, it just doesn't look very good. So you need to go in with uh, some soft round brushes and blend all that atmospheric transition from the character into the background and in between certain features and stuff. It's one of the big fundamentals of painting that I think is kind of missing in most 3D art renders. I'm also experimenting with little color accents and this is where if I'm going to do any color I can direct you know how intense it's going to be and uh, where it's going to be to support the main composition. Uh, you should always treat color like value where it should never work against where you want the viewer's eye to go. Um, and as far as like big bright colors, they are the first thing we notice in a painting, but if you actually look closely at it, it's a very small part of the painting usually. Um, so it's like treating it like a garnish on uh, like a fancy dinner plate or something. It's handled very lightly and it's always used to support the main foundation of the entire piece.
So this is the final image I came up with. Uh, I feel like I learned a lot with this piece. Um, there's always stuff I want to improve upon, but that's just, as always, the nature of creating digital art. Your job is never done. You always want to uh, take the mistakes that you did with this one and apply it to the next sketch you do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this run through. I know I really kind of skimmed over my process and just did like sort of a superficial commentary, but hopefully down the line I can start making videos that really delve into uh, stuff that makes up actual lessons uh, rather than just like sort of a casual commentary on what I'm doing. Um, so hopefully I can get those done soon and uh, hopefully you can look forward to that. So thanks for watching.